The short talk is going to be kind of a um, an add-on to the other video that I've made. Um, if you look in my on my uploads, there was a video I made um, over a year ago where I'm talking about a um, a school that I went to. Uh, it was it was a a class that took ten days that I had to commit my time to. So I I signed up for the course and stayed on the grounds where they where they have the it's like a retreat center or it's you know could be you know it's a five hundred one so it's non profit organization. It's the the ten day course is free. If you take the whole course and you sign up for it, you have to you have to stay for the full ten days. They recommend that as part of the part of the course curriculum. That's there. There's instructions that you need to hear. If you're if you start in on the course and you follow the directions of the teacher, then and you follow his instructions to the end of the course, you will have a better. Um, meditation experience while you're at the center now there are the facilities are, are, are accommodating there's like a dormitory for the men and a, a separate dormitory for the women and then they have you know showers and toilet facilities you know and um, lots of open space lots of um, at the course I went to, there was areas for walking. You could walk around between having to be in the course uh, or on your own meditation time. And then there was time that was available for you while you were in your own sleeping area. Um, you could either stay in your sleeping area or you could go and walk around the grounds on the paths. And then they all have benches and places to sit down and, 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 and walk, walkways that go through the, the, um, the property of wherever the courses are at. So in between the time you're sitting, um, and meditating, then you can take a break and then they'll, you know, and then there's, there's a routine you have to go through, you know, the, there's a meal in the morning. Um, so you get a b good big breakfast and then the rest of the, in the afternoon you get fruit and maybe some, um, you can, you know, have cold drinks, um, you know, like ice water, lemonade, that sort of thing. And, and it, the first day that you get there, they have a dinner for you. Um, so you can, you, and then every day after that, there is a, you have, you only have breakfast and then a, a light lunch of fruit and then tea or then you know there's no other meals that are given to you during the day the other thing is eye contact and any kind of communication with the other students that are there that's they will if you if you if you do that then they'll ask you to leave um, you know there because it's it's very you're not supposed to be interfering with the other students that are there in the meditation program they are to be as if they, as if you're there by yourself. That's the way you're, you're supposed to behave. Um, so there's no communication, there's no talking, there's no singing, you don't, you're not allowed to read or, or write, you're not allowed to bring in a musical instrument, um, you're, you're not, it's, it's restricted on, um, like colognes and, and body sprays and perfume. And, and maybe scented deodorant and that sort of thing is, is they ask not for you to not bring anything like that with you. So if you're going to use deodorant, use unscented and then they have, they don't really have, they don't have laundry, they didn't have laundry facilities where I was, but they had places you can hang your clothes. If you're going to like, you know, you don't want to dry a towel out or something, they had, um, places to dry the clothes. On the um, the tenth day, that's the day you can break silence, and, and you're allowed to talk with the other students there. So that you know, you have to if you're gonna want to, if you're gonna want to, you can't. You still the men and the women are still separate, and then the, the, 
then the morning, the actual morning of the, uh, the, the ninth day, you're actually allowed to talk. I'm sorry. And then the tenth day, you, you leave. But it's, it's a lot of sitting. There's a lot of time that you're spending being very quiet and still, sitting on a cushion. They they also have what's called a meditation bench, which is used in Japanese Zen meditation traditions. It's you kneel that you kneel, you rest your buttocks on the bench and you and you and you kneel forward with a cushion under your uh, arches of your of your ankles. Then there's other cushions you can sit on. They have you know styrofoam cushion or foam cushions, different sizes, and they had a lot of different kinds of heavy blankets um, and comfortable pillows to sit on so you, you're not you're not you're not you're not told to only have to you only have to sit in the lotus posture that it's not you're not you can sit in a chair they have normal chairs you could they if, if you want to then they you can sit on cushions they, they don't want you to lay down. They want, you know, you have to sit upright. Um, and you're, you're assigned a seat in the hall where they meditate. There's a cushion there with your, you know, they, when, you, when you get there, they put your name on it. And then that's the same cushion you use every time you're in the meditation hall, seated in meditation. Or you can have a chair also. They'll have um, a lot of assortment of, of different padding that you can use to sit on. So you don't, if you're getting, if your bottom is getting uncomfortable or your knees are getting uncomfortable or aching, then you can sit as long as you stay, you know, during the meditation, you, the least amount of movement of your body that you can do is, is, is the, you'll get the better results you'll get during meditation. So the, the trick is, if you have an ache or you have a, you're getting tired in one area of that part of your body, you you very 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 slowly just move, kind of like you can almost like rock back and forth, but rock rock back and forth in in like slow motion, and then that part of your body will get it won't there won't be as much tension on it, and you can do little things like that while you're sitting because you because the the whole intention is to sit so still to be so quiet and still that you're able to take all of your attention and focus that attention on the sensations within your own body and one of the rules the guidelines is given about keeping the um, keeping the framework of your concentration within your own body during the course so you're not you don't let your imagination wander around. Focus all of your attention on the sensations within your own body while you're in meditation. And and when you're when you're very, very carefully follow Mr. Goenka and, and listen to his instructions very carefully while you're in meditation, you'll get better results if you if you follow what Mr. Goenka is telling you to do during the meditation exercise, it's a very ancient tradition. It's been it's been passed on from 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 people to people to people for for, for generations. It's very old, um, so it, it it you know there was there were yogis before Buddha. There were the Upanishads and. There was other sects in Hinduism that predated Buddha, so meditation wasn't something that he he was his an idea. He was more of a uh, psychiatrist, you know. If you if you had a mental illness in the, in ancient times, then there was the practice of psychiatry was this. If you could, I I would say. If if there's anything equal to that in the ancient times of modern psychiatry, it would have to be um, the practice of meditation. So I'm, if you go, then I hope you have a good time. I hope you not, you know, like I, I hope you can. If you're prepared for it, and you're and you're in your right 
and you follow the rules and you listen to the instructions given, you will benefit a lot from it. You'll learn a lot about yourself, about what's going on in, inside of your own mind. Especially in the beginning, that's the, that's because after the first few days, you're so, your mind is so calm, you're so, your inner, you're silent inside, the chatter is gone, all of the noise, um, of the world just subsides and you're left with your own, with it, with the, with your own thoughts, with yourself. You really understand how much you are, how much it's going on in your own head <laughs> most of the time, but you're not. If, if you have all, if you because of the environment that the course provides, the, the the setting that they have, the facilities, the the itinerary, the, the and the and the tradition part of the of the of it, you, you it it makes it easier for you to meditate. If you're just trying to meditate on your own without any guidance or instruction. Or any other people around that are meditating that are, it, then it's going to be hard, difficult for you to do that. Because for me, I'm you know in my own life, I, I I have to honestly say that I don't practice meditation on a regular basis today. That I, being that that those courses that I took at at the center. If the Dhamma Centers was um, was something that I was I always want to go and do again. I mean, sometimes it it would be like it would be like being able to go deeper into m my own life to see what you know why I am the way I am today. Do more f f exploration into myself using the meditation um, exercise. What it is, is a lot of it is just your own body and how you feel in your own body. And when you really start looking at your body and observing your own body from, from being a sensory person, just sensing those, that part, those parts of your body, feeling your skin, feeling your arm, feeling your leg, feeling your, your elbow, feeling your, your skin on your, feeling inside of your around your mouth, feeling up in your forehead, feeling, 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 sitting there, feeling, feeling, feeling all your body, all for, for hours and hours and hours, you're feeling your body. Well, what happens is you start, for me, I was remembering things that happened along in my childhood when I like broke my leg and when I fell down and when I got burned and when, when I got somebody pushed me, all these things that happened that I felt in my body was I was remembering that happened to me at a really early age. I don't know if any of you, if anyone else has had that kind of experience. But that, that was what kind of half started happening to me. It was, and then you're getting, you get euphoric too, euphoria, where you feel like you might, like you could just float. You're just like floating in the air. So anyhow, you're going to have your own, Things are going to happen. You'll you'll find out if you go. You'll find out what what happens when you spend hours and hours and hours sitting still for every day, ten hours a day, just sitting still, looking at your own thoughts and and observing your own body. Just watch what's happening inside of your body. Being being a body. And feeling a body by just sitting there and you feel your neck, you feel your back, you feel your bottom, you feel your leg, you feel your arm, you feel your finger, feel, you feel, feel, feel all over your body. And breathing is, that's what anchors you. You always come back to the breathing. The breathing is what, if your mind starts wandering away, you come back, come back to the, to the breath and the nostrils. Which is the, you know, and when I came back from my last course, I did meditate for an hour in the morning and an hour in the, in the afternoon, evening. But I then I then I stopped doing that because I got too busy. I got too many too many distractions. 